All right, we're getting started. Let's start off with last Monday. So last Monday was our movement for movement. So we are back at this again, coming off of Aortic Disease Awareness Month of September. And let's talk about some movement. We we basically come up with articles and different uh, things to talk about to incentivize you and motivate you to get moving because it's okay to move. It's okay whatever your doctor says you can do because we don't know where you are in your, uh, you know, recovery and management of aortic disease. I don't know if you are fresh out of the hospital or you're 10 years down the road. I just say, move. Whatever your doctor says you are cleared to do, please do it. I'm not your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm just here to motivate you. Rah, rah. <laughs> like your cheerleader and tell you that it's okay. It's better than okay. It's healthy and it's important for you to move your body. We know sometimes doing nothing is still doing something. And it really truly is. But Sometimes you just need a little bit of support to help you get moving. So let's give you a little bit of that support right now. Walking. Walking is literally one of the most simplest ways and most effective ways that you can improve your health and your well being. It can actually help you burn calories. We all could use a little bit of that, right? It can help you strengthen your muscles, it can lower your blood pressure. Um, it can help you reduce stress and ultimately boost your mood. I don't know about you, but right now in the mid-Atlantic region, walking is beautiful. We are going to be in 80 degree weather, but even if it's 60, the trees are changing colors. And to me, this is another one of my favorite times of year. I just love when the breeze comes in and the leaves start falling. And it's a great time just to get out and walk. If you're going to wear headsets, though, please keep one out for safety. Just food for thought. But according to Jamie Davis Smith with Yahoo Life, here's what some of the studies are actually saying about walking. So don't take my word for it. Listen to what some of the studies say. This can actually help you reduce your risk of dementia. Go figure. If you, we can all remember that we should walk, it would help you reduce your risk of dementia. A study published in JAMA Neurology found that taking 9,800 steps, so not quite you're the 10,000 everybody talks about, but if you take 9,800 steps, that may actually be considered optimal to lower the risk of developing dementia. Go figure. I mean, we now know that you don't have to do 10,000 in order to truly benefit from walking. I think they lowered the number, but they have done a study, obviously, that says 9,800. Why it's not 97, 99. 9,800 steps could actually help you lower the risk of developing dementia. However, the study found that taking as few steps as 3,800 a day could actually lower your risk of developing dementia by 25%. So that's still a huge percentage in my book. So if you could even just pop in 3,800 steps, which I think is, that's not too far off from a mile. I forgot how many steps, you know, average stride steps equals a mile, but it will re potentially lower that risk by 25%. So that's that's pretty big. Walking can actually help you live longer. Did you know this? Because I did not know this. A study also published in JAMA Internal Medicine found that older women that were taking steps that were about 4,400 steps a day, they had a 41% chance lower as far as a risk of dying. Now, this is all different things considered, but this helps increase their longevity. You just have to think of it like this. And another study Another one, again, published in JAMA Network Open, found that taking 7,000 steps a day was linked to a 50 to 70% lower risk of mortality overall. And that's a huge percentage. Yet another study, there's so many studies, this one was published in Nature, found that walking briskly, and again, briskly would be defined by each person differently, but walking briskly for as little as 10 minutes a day could lower your biological age by 16 years and help you live 20 years longer. I am so in. If I could lower my technical age by 16 years, well, that makes me carry the four and the three. That makes me a lot younger than I am right now. Look, walking briskly for 10 minutes is nothing. During COVID, we used to do this with all of you by walking around our houses internally. I would go live on Facebook and just walk around the first floor of my house, keeping track of my heart rate on my smartwatch. And I put in a couple of miles just talking to everybody. So it's something that you can easily do. Be mindful again of the weather and the temperatures and your terrain and talk with your doctor before you do it. But oh my gosh, to like lower my age by like 16 and help me live 20 years longer than whatever I'm supposed to anyway. Sounds good to me. 
it can actually also help reduce your risk for uh, heart disease and cancer. Now, we know a lot of this stuff is DNA related, but you know your genes need to get turned on. They need to be, become activated. So if we can do things to, I don't know, maybe not activate them so soon, and I don't even know if that's right. I'm just making this up. But if walking can help, like why not just walk, right? A study pu published in JAMA Internal Medicine showed that taking up to 10,000 steps a day could actually lower uh, your risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. And that there was, but that there was also no clear benefit to taking more than 10,000 steps. That was the study I think I was referring to. You don't really need to go haywire crazy and take more than 10,000. And look, 10,000, it sounds like a lot because it is a lot. It's a lot. It really is. Uh, I think that when you're in Disney or Universal Studios, walking 18 to 20,000, you don't even realize it until the end of the day and your feet are in pain and agony. But you could easily walk. I mean, you know, I was walking around New York City last weekend and I mean, so quickly logged in 8,000. Next thing you know, it was 12,000 steps because you're just, you're just kind of going about your day. So it's kind of really easy to do it not so easy when you plan it and you think about it. Cause then I feel like it thinks like work. It feels like work for a lot of us, for a lot of you, you love it and eat it up and God, I wish I had that in me. But for me, if I had to say to myself today, I think I'm going to work, walk 10,000 steps. Ugh, can't do it. I want to do it, but I'll go to the mall. I'll go to the mall and walk around for sure. And I bet you I pull in a ton of steps. It might take me longer cause I'm going to window shop too, but, uh, but I'll definitely do that. See, if I make it fun, then I can get all of this activity in. I just have to make it fun for myself. Well, walking can help with blood pressure. It could help with blood pressure. And according to a study published in Peers, walking th uh, 300 minutes a week, just a week, 300 in a week, could actually reduce your blood pressure. There's a million different reasons why you should be walking. Walking actually can also help you sleep better. So a study published in the Sleep Health Journal showed that taking an additional 2,000 steps a day can actually improve the duration and quality of your sleep. There's a million different benefits to walking and it can improve your mental health. So walking can help reduce anxiety and depression. It relieves stress. Uh, it lessens your negative emotions. According to this study in International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, there's a lot of positives in your mental health just by walking. And it can also help to strengthen your bones, which is very important, especially to pre-menopausal and menopausal and post-menopausal women. Why? Because we lose calcium in our bones. And so if you want an easy way to strengthen your bones, just take a walk. Taking a brisk walk for as little as 30 minutes a day, like three days a week, I think it says, can help improve bone density and prevent osteoporosis. That's according to a study that was published in uh, PLOS1. I'm not too sure what that, what that organization is, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, walking can also help lower um, your risk for type 2 diabetes. And we know that type 2, I thought, was the kind of diabetes that can become acquired, whereas type 1 is usually one that you're born with. I could be wrong. But a study published by the American Diabetes Association found that the risk of developing type 2 diabetes went down with every additional 2,000 steps you put in. Now, these are all risks and probably really small percentages, but they still exist. And they're still important. And walking, look, it's good for your brain. It can improve your memory, your creativity, your cognitive function. Walking is not only good for you, but think about this. It can also be really fun and enjoyable. I mean, if you have a pet, well, they're going to enjoy that. If you have friends, walk with them, family members. It's a great time to have a really supercharged, important conversation because you're walking and you're in public and nobody can have an argument. Hmm. That's one way to look at it, right? It's a great time to catch up with people. And now we can walk and we can be on Zoom on our phones. Just again, leave one earbud out so you can be aware of your surroundings. It's a great place to listen to your music in one earbud. Don't make the whole world listen to your conversations or your music on speakerphone. But ugh, here's a joke for you. Why did the chicken cross the road? If you walk, you'll find out and you'll tell us next week. Speaking of telling us something next week, I was supposed to do something and tell you guys what the results were. Do you remember what that was, Josh, from last week? 
I cannot remember. I can okay, tell no. you that uh, the question you had was how many steps within a mile uh, is about 2250. Ah, so, see. Uh, depending on the step length, you can go between mm -hmm. 2.1 and 2.5 feet per stride. Right. Okay. And so when you're looking at 10,000 steps, you're looking at four and a half miles of walking. Yeah. And for a lot of people, just a walk, you can get that done in like an hour. It's very easy. Sure. It's very easy. But even if you just start slowly, take a look at your watch, take a look at your phone, because you can download all of these stepping Fitbit type of apps and just walk around your house. First floor, you want to be challenging and add in steps and then do the whole, your top floor or do a basement or do around the outside of your house. If you're only on one floor, do it. I used to like to do it. And then when I would get to one location, I would just turn and go the other direction. And my dog would join in. She thought it was nuts. But again, I was doing at least a mile, if not more in less than, you know, less than 15 minutes. It was fun. It was easy. And I was inside. Too many pros to walking that I see in this article that makes me now, you know, maybe what we need to do is go on live. Maybe we should be doing this from my phone and I walk, I talk to people, walk and talk, walk and talk with Karen. Kind of like it. Yeah, that sounds like win. a morning show. <laughs> Not too early though, because I like to sleep in. All right. That is our movement for movement Monday.